This is the Tough Air 710. And if you believe you are up for a treat, buckle up because today it's, it's going to be all about being disappointed. Let's start at the beginning. A Tough Air 710 comes in a relatively high quality box, some images, some specs and the usual stuff. Inside we'll find the dual tower heatsink, installation material for all nowadays relevant sockets, a 1-2 PVM splitter, a PVM limiter and the usual tube of thermal paste. On that note, the one positive thing about this cooler is how they package up the mounting hardware. Basically a man version of these pimple poppers. And believe me, enjoy the satisfaction of you popping these out because you will need that to get through the feeling of later when you install it. Anyway, the dual tower heat sinks are about 166 mm high, measuring until the end of the two black thermal tape labeled covers. The heat sink consists of 48 stacked fins which are fairly spaced out, so not much static pressure is needed to make this work. Being 166 mm high makes this one hell of a chunky boy. However, this goes into every direction. Ignoring the height, the cooler is also 148.6 mm wide. So no matter the angle you look at it, this is huge, with a huge RAM problem. By default, the RAM clearance is 25mm. Good luck finding 25mm RAM. But thankfully, the fans are mounted using the usual metal clips. So as Thermal Take explained it, you are perfectly able to fit the right fan up to create 48mm of a gap for your RAM. Listen, usually I don't see an issue if you need to move a fan up, but usually coolers are not 100 and 60 something millimeters high by default. I understand the necessity of using ultra low profile RAM in miniature small form factor cases, but here, if I would create that 48 millimeter gap, I am looking at a 188, 189 millimeter high tower. Yes, there are cases that allow that, basically every Fantex or every Be Quiet case, but you will be heavily limited by default. But more importantly, I am always performance over design or form or price. But I don't see a reason to have something this chunky if it doesn't perform size appropriate. But we will get to that. These are 140mm Tough Fan 140s. They are spinning at up to 1400 rpm whilst pushing up to 81.96 CFM at up to 1.81mm of H2O. They feature a quite short 9 blade design and generally I would say that their numbers look quite positive considering the slow fan speed. These numbers do look promising which made it weird to me to understand why they would include that RPM limiter in the first place. It's not like 1400 RPMs would be unbearably loud at max speed anyway. But let's get to the reason for my huge disappointment. In the bottom we got a 40 by 50 millimeter copper nickel plated base. That's not the disappointing part yet, but going up from there we got seven heat pipes that are traveling up the fin stack. Seven heat pipes, not five, not six, seven disappointment pipes. But before we get to how they manage to take the heat away, get ready for the toughest part about this tough air, cause there's a reason why it's called tough air. To get the cooler going on AMD, we first need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with the AMD spacers marked with B, good luck reading that, followed by the retention brackets with the indentation pointing away from the CPU, and then screw everything down using the screws. Over on Intel, and this is going to be the fun one, take the provided backplate, shove the Intel screws through it and position it behind the motherboard. Now on the other side, slap on the Intel spacers marked with an A for LGA1700 or B for LGA1200 and 1150, add the brackets with the ends pointing towards the CPU and then get ready for some serious anger issues to tighten these motherfuckers. Just by watching this video it might seem like I slightly exaggerated here, but back when I benchmarked this thing, these things made me furious and, and it's, it's just so unnecessary. Nobody, and I mean nobody does it this way. Make them out of freaking metal and, and make them usable with the damn screwdriver. Why make people go through all the pain? 
my sausage fingers won't do that. And ignoring that you are getting your fingers in between things you definitely don't want to break. Why? Anyway, after that, use some of the thermal paste, maybe even by help of the thermal paste application sheet, and then screw everything down. After this disappointing part, let's get to the next disappointing part. We benchmarked the cooler on our standardized benchmark machine featuring a 3900K with three different presets, 120, 250, and 320 watts. At 120 watts, which would be like the most gaming-like scenario, we saw that the Tough Air 710 managed to keep the CPU at 34.2 degrees C above ambient, which on its own isn't such a bad result. It's right behind the thermal right pillar as in 120 SC, but remember the seven heat pipes? And remember the huge heatsink? Considering its size and features, this thing should have landed significantly higher. It should have outperformed a PA120 or U12A or an HD15 or a K620 and so on and so on, but it didn't. The one thing it did quite okay is noise. It's not loud, but it doesn't have an amazing ratio either. Slowly lowering the fan speed in 10% steps while noting down the temps and noise, we create these noise to performance lines. And yes, the Thermal Take Tough Air 710 did not create a horrible line, that's definitely true. But considering its size, I would have expected the line to be much, much closer to the Dark Rook Elite. At 250 watts, the shit show really started. At 66.7 degrees C above and Ambient and landed on the bottom third of the list, far, far away from any other 7 heat pipe cooler. The noise to performance chart looks quite similar, just a lot worse. Sure, it outperforms the Kuga Forza 135 in noise to performance. That's one thing that Thermal Take did well, but not at this cost. And 320 watts, well, no. It just, it just didn't. So where do we stand? It's a giant cooler. It really is from every angle, height, width, depth, one giant boy. And the RAM compatibility just sucks because it's symmetrical and there's a 140mm fan in the front, which basically means either you take RAM without any heatsink or the smallest PCB you can find or get comfortable that your cooler is touching your tempered glass side panel. But my two biggest issues with this is A, the mounting. Thermal take just seems to hate Intel users. No idea why they had to do that. This so hard. Oh, and it's not even the worst part. There are two brackets screwed in from the bottom. These are responsible to later be screwed down to the mounting hardware. Anyway, the first time I installed, I did everything I needed to do to mount it down, it wobbled like hell. Because the cooler came with one of these screws loose. Great! And the second thing is, it does not perform size adequate. Sure, on its own, as like a product, it's not a bad cooler. It's comparable to a Thermal Pillars Assassin 120SE or Gamdia's Boreas P1, so it's not like bad. But for that size, it should be way better. But what about the price? For about 70 bucks right here and now, no, I, I wouldn't recommend this cooler. Not that it's a bad thing, it would do a good job for a 7600X, 14600K, it, it would even do a, a 14700K, but I just wouldn't do it. For the price tag, you can find way better products with way less restrictions, which are way easier to use, which, uh, yeah, I won't talk about design because that's up to you, but which work just better overall, which are quieter, and so on and so forth, so I just wouldn't do it. If you really want to go through and you will make it fit, sure, suit yourself, but price to performance or price to size or performance to size or any, any other metric, not making my list. But okay, for today, this is going to be it for Thermal Take and their tough installation 710. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG Poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve for a therapy, because now I need a therapy. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Thermal Ride Phantom Spirit 120. That's how how you make an air cooler. Hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.